Hi, I'm Ashley, and this video is to accomplish the five things listed over here in this Word document. So first, I'm going to explain how to upload data into a database. If you go over here to the list of, um, go into the database lot, and then to the schema lot, and also into the table lot, then you can right-click on the table and select Import, and type in the specific um, document name or title and then also select if you want it to be a CSV or if it is a CSV. So the specific Excel document that we we put into this database is right here and it represents the lottery. So each one of these rows is a number generated from the lottery. So the first five are generated pretty similarly but then the sixth one is a separate generation. So when when doing a histogram of these different these different numbers it can give us an idea of how to strategically select numbers for the lottery and possibly be closer to winning them so now let's get into postgres if you if you go into postgres and you want to do the second thing on this list to determine the number of counts for the number found in N1 through N6, you'll have to create an SQL. So this button up here will create that for you. So the SQL statement that I have created, I had to make six different statements to show six different histograms. And the first statement is listed here. Select A is my variable and we're going to count the numbers in A. So we have to also have a from statement and a group by and an order by statement and I ordered them in ascending order. So if you look down here these are the numbers that um, correspond with the amount of frequency. So one is is pretty frequent 40 repetitions and so on and so forth which is the list right here. So if I scroll down you can see that as I as the numbers get bigger on in the left column they get smaller to the right, so the frequency is less and less as the numbers get higher. So the histogram is distributed pretty heavily for the smaller numbers. And now let's go to the second SQL statement, which is about the second column in, or the second number in the lottery. And you can see that the distribution here is shifted a little bit downward or towards the, the the tens and the twenties. As I scroll down you can see that it shifted a little and now if I go to the next SQL statement for the third column you can see that it shifted even more by looking at all of these numbers here. It's more heavily in the middle chunk of numbers. And now if we look at the fourth column the same thing happens here as the numbers have shifted down even further. And also the same story goes for the fifth column. It's more heavily towards the, the later numbers. And now let's look at the sixth column, which is much different than the rest of them because it has um, a different type of distribution. It's more random distributed. See as the numbers are, are not as consistent or do not seem to have a pattern. And the histograms that we'll create in MATLAB will show this specifically. So if I go to MATLAB and select this script that I've created, you can see that I've connected um, the database to um, MATLAB by using these statements up here with the SQL query and such. And now these statements down here are my subplots depicting specific histograms, the six different ones, making them distinct. And now let's just go ahead and run this and see what those histograms look like. So these are each of the six columns or the six possible numbers that you could select. So if you're doing the lottery, it's good to select your first number as being kind of small and then the second number a little bigger, third number bigger, fourth, fifth, and so on. And the six, you can see that it's a little harder to guess the general area because the distribution seems to be kind of random in here. So now we have, we have determined the number of counts and also we have shown the histogram and determined the distribution for the numbers 1 to 6. Now let's determine the number of counts for the entire list of numbers. 
let's take a look at these SQL statements that I've made right here this statement if I move it down you can see that each one of these statements are connected with a union statement and that connects each one of the in one and two and three columns as we go down using also from and group by statements to um, connect them as well and then finally an order by statement using this variable ball which I created at the very top here with the first variable and if I move this up you'll be able to see what's really going on it's associating frequencies with the numbers so this is how many times that one will occur but there is an issue here because it says that one occurs twice but we need to somehow add these together so I needed to create a whole nother SQL statement to total these frequencies over here and that is what this SQL statement is right here if I move this down a little bit you can see that um, I did a select statement and I used all the variables that I have deter had determined in my previous calculation or previous coding and now as we look at one it it occurred twice in this list over here so one was listed twice and now we can see that there was a total done 40 plus 21 is 61 so it has done that through for each of the numbers going down this line so really the column that we're ultimately trying to get to is this last column called total ball count and that's telling us the frequency of each number according to um, grouping all of these columns together or possible numbers together for the lottery so now if we want to put that into our database we had to go up here and do a create or replace statement or create or replace view statement so that's what I have done up here so if I just get rid of my comment dashes that's what it has done in um, Postgres and see it tells you how quickly it, it calculated that let's do the same for this one alright so now the information that we needed is now in Postgres so if we go over here to MATLAB again to create our histogram, this is a similar entrance code to connect you to your database again, the exact same code, but now we are creating a histogram. But there was a little difficulty in creating the histogram, so I had to kind of manipulate it using a bar graph and associating the numbers with the frequencies in a different way. But still, as we run this, it will definitely look like a histogram. Let's see here. Let me exit out of this previous one and let's run it again. See what happens. All right, here we go. So this is a histogram or a manipulated bar graph to look like a histogram of all of the different possible numbers that you could select in the lottery. And as you can see, the, num the, the histogram really drops off here at the higher numbers. And that's, again, because of what I said about the sixth number in the lottery not being generated the same as all the other numbers. So this is this wraps up my tutorial and we have definitely covered each one of these bases here for this tutorial determining the number of counts, the histograms for each of these determined number of counts for the entire or for each individual in through six. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.